you kind of get these romantic ideas of these kind of white snow capped mountains and it looks pretty epic in, in videos and, and, and photos but I think when you actually fly in there and you fly in like this little plane between the, the mountains and you're just getting dwarfed by by these massive mountains you just realize the scale and enormity of them. Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Stokely. An opportunity for you to sit back, connect, listen, learn and evolve through the art of conversation. And today I get to speak with Ryan Sands from South Africa. But before we get into that conversation, I do want to take a moment to thank the traditional custodians upon the lands which this podcast was created, and I'd like to pay my respects to the elders, past, present and emerging. So if you do know Ryan Sands, you'll know that he's been a professional athlete in trail and ultra running for a long time. And I can tell you that's been 13 years, and that is not an easy thing to do. But today we get to find out a little bit more about that story. We get to speak about how he went from being a quantity surveyor to being a full-time athlete and how that didn't really translate to being a easier job. Ryan's one of those guys that's all or nothing. And throughout a number of the stories he shares with us today, we really find that out. And we also find out that Ryan's a pretty giving person when it comes to giving back to his community and also the country of South Africa and the people that he can help through being a little bit more privileged than others. And he speaks about it openly and I really appreciate Ryan's thoughts and his ability to not just share what he's thinking in in that regard, but also that he goes out there and does it. And he does speak about the inspiration and the motivation you do get back from giving so much. So I really hope you enjoy this conversation. It's not all about running and not all about being a professional. We do get to speak about his incredible journey running across Nepal on the Great Himalayan Trail or an alteration of that. And also we get to speak a lot about family life and what it's like to live in South Africa and how we see sport or those other interactions in the country that really uplift the people and the country as a whole. And I think that's really incredible insight, especially for someone like me who didn't know as much as I do now about the country of South Africa and how some people in that country definitely can use their privilege in a really, really positive way. So I really appreciate Ryan for sharing what he did and I really hope you enjoy the conversation. I hope it inspires some conversation within your own life because that's what it's all about. So thanks a lot for listening. And I really hope you enjoy it. Yeah, it's it's great to be able to sit down and have a chat with you because, uh, yeah, you're you've been a big inspiration to uh, a lot of people that I know. I've learned a lot from you, been able to work alongside you. So, yeah, Ryan, um, how's it going over in Cape Town at the moment? Yeah, stoked stoked to be on on the podcast and yeah, nice one. Uh, listen to to a couple of the, the episodes and yeah, they're, they're super super cool. Um, yeah, all all good in, in Cape Town. I guess for us, it's it's the second week of full lockdown, so we're not allowed to leave our home. So I guess starting to get a little bit of cabin fever, but at at, at the same time, I guess you just got to kind of embrace um, or like what's what's happening and just. Um, try and see see the positives so yeah i'm lucky um, i'm spending a lot more more time with with the family at, at at the moment and yeah i guess been doing doing lots of like strength work and not a huge amount of running um and then i guess just kind of waiting and, and kind of to see like kind of what happens uh yeah to to the rest of of the year yeah well it's it's different times hey i think everyone's everyone's experiencing this in their own way but at the same time everyone is is in some way affected because i mean this thing is is um is hard to comprehend in some some moments but it's uh yeah it's certainly a a big a big sign that maybe the the world's putting up right now to say hey guys like something's going on here that that we should maybe like pay attention to and make some changes to avoid later on in the future yeah for sure i definitely think that the world's pissed off with us and um yeah i think we need to have a have a like a, a look at like how we're doing things um and i always say sometimes like as as humans we think we think we're getting it right and, and we think we're indestructible but it's 
pretty evident that uh, we're not. And we definitely, yeah, as, as I say, there's a, a, like a lot of negatives and the loss of life is, is, is tragic. Um, that, that's that coming out of this and kind of people are losing a lot. But I, I think it's maybe showing us that we kind of yeah, need to reevaluate what's what's important to us and um, and just kind of slow things down down a little. Um, I think even just like from a a smaller impact, just seeing a, a kind of drone video like over the city of of, of Cape Town from a, kind of two days ago, and we've only had lockdown for I think we're on day eight or nine now, and just kind of how clear um, the city is, like a lot less smog like a lot less pollution and stuff so um yeah i, th I think we need it we need to kind of sort our shit out as, as humans yeah i yeah i couldn't have said it better myself and and you know for someone like yourself someone like me getting outside and being in in you know the outdoors and grand landscapes and and just even you know even table mountain it's just like on the on the doorstep of the city really but um yeah, those places certainly give you something that a lot of other material things that people strive for in this world um, really can't provide. Like, how do you um, yeah, how do you view your your relationship with being outdoors? And and you know, do you think it it can benefit everyone as humans, or do you think it's only some people that really have that kind of a connection with it? No, I definitely think like kind of yeah, the, the outdoors can benefit with every everyone. Um just in terms of I guess you I think you've probably seen it, a lot more people are starting to to go outdoors and kind of whether it's hiking, mountain biking or trail running or whatever, just just kind of or mountaineering, just getting getting out there. And, and I, I think it's just having that that interaction with with nature and just I guess when you're out there everything slows down a lot more. You're able to like process things and like kind of gather your thoughts i know whenever like kind of i'm over things and and i need i need a time out for me like go and head out to, into the mountains for a long run or a hike or whatever and, and i guess it just enables me to almost feel like i can pull away from a situation and just kind of reevaluate properly and just make sense of it i think like or i know our lives are so busy and things are just like kind of just go, go, go. And like, we need to feel busy to, to feel like we're achieving stuff. And I think often we actually just go hang around in, in circles and not actually achieving a hell of a lot or not really kind of finding kind of any substance or, or meaning. Um, so I think, yeah, kind of going out to, to nature, just kind of, or like the outdoor environments, even kind of heading out for, for a surf. Um, I think it just really kind of it just kind of slows down things and you're actually able to to be in, in the moment a little bit you're not kind of worried about kind of the future or kind of what's been happening in in, in the past you just kind of really in, in in the present and i think that can help or i know it can can help everyone and i think more people need to get outdoors um and, and that, that's why i think it's important that we kind of take the the current situation seriously and and, and realize that um, this is no joke and and we actually need to kind of uh, sort it out yeah for sure i guess i mean if you i i was actually just um checking out your instagram account the other day and i i find it cool that you've got the the john muir quote sitting up there and the quote is um you don't ever conquer a mountain you are permitted to stand on it and I mean, why, like, why did you, why do you have that quote as your Instagram profile, like description and like, what's, what's that all about? Yeah, I, th I think it's like, it's pretty true. Like, I think, as I mentioned earlier, I think as like, as humans, we like to think we're indestructible and kind of, we can put a grab some ice axes and go and summit a, a kind of mountain and, and we can like conquer anything. But I, th I think kind of nature is always greater than us and, and our natural kind of environment. And, 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 I, and I think we, we need to kind of take that, that like seriously. I remember like growing up as a kid, my grandfather always used to like, um, or like kind of warn me about the, like with going, going to, to the beach and just having like saying, you need to have a healthy respect for, for the ocean. Like, um, you lost a friend fishing that kind of got, got sucked in, into the ocean. So I think it's the same for the mountain and, and, like any in, in environment, I think it's important to have 
like a natural, like a healthy respect for it, but to go out and, and enjoy it, but know what your limits are and, and just kind of realize that we are actually pretty insignificant uh, when it when it comes to to the planet and just uh, I guess appreciate that and not and not get too far ahead of ourselves. Yeah, I mean, you know, you're a you're a father now. You've got the choice now to to have an influence on a on a young kid, and yeah, you know, how do you go about it? What what example do you set, and how can how can other young parents out there or older parents learn from you as a as a father now? Yeah, I think with that, it's like important to um, yeah try and set a set a good good example, and I just I guess also make make time as as I mentioned earlier. I guess being a kind of these days everything kind of happens so quickly, and you're always rushing to do something and. It's just that, and and you. So I guess I've learned like sometimes, like you kind of don't don't give your your child enough enough time, and and for them it's like I don't know. It's, sometimes it's for them they just want to kind of sit around and and do nothing, or just have have your attention, which I think is is kind of really important. But I guess yeah, it's, I think being um, it's important to to set a good example, but also I guess I've realised say with my my son Max like. Um, He's super like kind of musical and kind of like enjoys like acting and and that kind of stuff. Um, he's, he enjoys the, the outdoors, but he's not like super super sporty. And I think it's important just to look as look at your children as kind of individuals and um, not kind of put any pressure on them to to do anything that you want to do. Um, it's yeah, it's, it's up, up to them to kind of carve their own own paths. Um, I think you just got to support them kind of in what they they want to do and give them the best guidance you can give them uh, maybe you think what they're doing is not necessarily what what you would do and, and I think you just have to respect that um, again if, if I look back at kind of my relationship with my dad when I, when I started ultra running um, I was working at a nine to five job in, in corporate as, as a quantity surveyor um, and we were kind of heading in, into a bit of a recession and I told my dad I was going to going to quit my job to to become an ultra and I didn't quite have enough sponsors but I was going to wing it and I knew like everything it went everything against what like he would do but he, he still supported me and, and backed me and kind of gave me an interest-free loan to to enter my my first um big kind of international race and I think like if he hadn't given me that support and and just kind of let me go with it and kind of let me take my own own path um i wouldn't wouldn't be here now so i think something like that's really an, an important for me it's just and I, I guess for fathers just to or parents just to kind of let your let your kids kind of roam free in, in, in a way but obviously give them the the right right guidance but they're not necessarily going to kind of follow in, in in the same footsteps that, that that you did or that you want them to do yeah you must have had a really um a really kind of intense belief in yourself to to do that to you know 13 years ago to say you know what like quantity surveying I'm you know I'm I'm pretty pretty good with but there's this thing called trail running and at that time there there must have been one maybe one like legitimate trail runner full time trail runner out there so you were really just kind of stepping out into a world that kind of didn't exist and so like what was the like what what gave you the the belief or the even thought to think that you could you could pull that off yeah i, I guess like looking back now it, it was quite a like a brave decision i guess i was like fairly kind of young and i've always had, like been an all or nothing person and i kind of realized like i was kind of half doing doing things for the first six months and I thought like just give it a give it a bash like go all all in and I also think luckily when I did kind of two of my first ultras the, the Gobi Desert uh, race with Racing the Planet and 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 uh, the, the Sahara Crossing both of them Dean Conazis was was running um, and I got to spend quite a lot of time with him and, and he was probably I guess probably him Scott Jurek and maybe a couple of other guys we were the first guys to really kind of do it on um Kind of ultra running on as a, on a professional basis, and um, yeah, I guess he taught me he taught me a lot, and just kind of 
seeing how he had, had done done things, um, he was definitely like a or was a huge in, in inspiration and and helped me a lot. So I think kind of seeing what what he achieved, like I was just like, look, like he's still still pretty pretty young. Just give it a give it a, a bash. And like I said, I've always just been kind of all or nothing. Let me let me give it a give it a go. And I, I think for me also, I think it was just that kind of that like search of for, for, for adventure um, that, that like kind of really kind of attracted me to, to the, the sports and some of the early kind of multi-stage races I did were in some really cool and epic locations. And I thought like, the, let me just kind of ride the, ride the wave while I can. Um, but like, yeah, first, first year or so was, was quite frustrating um, in terms of, yeah, it was hard to, to get um, sponsors um and yeah, you know, you're kind of doing well and you kind of at times feel like flip like I should be getting more more sponsors and stuff like that, which eventually did did, did happen. You just got I guess gotta keep like chipping away at it and, and thinking out out the box. Yeah, I mean what are what are some of the things that you saw Dean do and that you had to do? I don't want to call them sacrifices because that word's come up a lot in in being in this space of trail running, ultra running, and even like any career that might be deemed, you know, tough to make successful, like even artists or painters who, who really just love that as their passion and they go, they go into that field. But like, and so people say, oh, you've got to make sacrifices, but I find it hard to call it a sacrifice because you're actually going into doing something that you really love and maybe you know, like not owning a brand new car to you isn't really that meaningful. So it's hard to call it a sacrifice, but you know, like what are some of the things that you can recount um, yourself doing like throughout that time? Yeah, I guess, yeah, as, as you say, kind of if you're super passionate and pumped on something you're doing, you don't see it as, as a sacrifice, but I guess indirectly, like I definitely kind of, I suppose, spent a lot less time with, with, with mates and it was a lot more kind of training and um, like a lot of people said, oh, cool, like kind of you're a full, full-time athlete now, that's cool. You just wake up, go for a run, maybe have some breakfast, have a sleep, go for another run and kind of repeat three times a, a day type thing. And, and, and for me, it was actually, I was actually kind of putting in a lot more hours than what I was being a nine to two five in, in like a, as, as a quantity surveyor, just um, obviously all the training and then just with, with sponsorships and commitments and trying to get like more sponsors on board and doing media stuff and planning. You, you know, it, it took, it takes up a lot of time. And I guess in a way it sounds a bit funny, but you almost have to see yourself like I may have quit my nine to five job, but like my new business was myself and I, you have to try and, run it like that. And, and something Dean said to me, which was, was pretty kind of in, invaluable. He said like kind of winning races, it isn't going to get you sponsorships. And in terms of, I think he's hundred percent true. Like you, you can be the best athletes and kind of eat, sleep and train and just crush every race you enter. But kind of that isn't only what, what brands and sponsors are looking for. You need to be all rounded athlete and, and, and person. And that definitely takes up a lot of, a lot of time. And there's a lot of, yeah, I guess a lot of commitments um, in that. But again, as, as I said, I was, I was pretty pumped and, and stoked on, on, on the whole thing. But I, th- I think the sacrifices definitely started spending a lot less time with, with, with mates, uh, maybe less and less time with, with, with family. And yeah, I guess it's, um, yeah, I guess looking, looking back, back now, I definitely kind of miss some of those, those, those relationships I had, had with, um, with kind of friends and, and, and family. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess they're, they're, they're things that you also can't really replace. So, hey, because they're, yeah, no, I think also sorry, off the topic, I remember, I try to remember the story now. I don't know if I got it hundred percent correct. Actually Dean, Dean Lesley from Wondering Fever Productions was telling me he went to, to a talk. Um, I think it was at, at Banff and um, I can't remember who it was, but basically he was saying like, the three pillars in, in your life, your profession, your family, and, and your friends. Um, and if you kind of have a good balance, like all three are equally as important, but I think to be like overly successful in, in one area. So if you want to be like really good, good trail runner or kind of in, in your, in your profession, you have to drop one of those, those pillars. So that's either kind of family or, or friends. Um, and the guys that are really, really 
success will often drop too and like just purely focused on on, on that so it kind of makes a, a, a lot of sense and I, I think what you what you're talking um, about in, in in some ways I, I don't know if that made made sense it just just popped to mind now no totally man I think I think a lot of people can relate to that too you know um, especially if if you've got to take yourself out of your community um, every now and again to to say like do something like you do to travel and race some of the bigger races in the world you've you've got to remove yourself constantly from the community that you're in and um, I think it can be hard to uh, continue to have those really strong bonds whether it be like your neighbor or your best mate or yeah even even to a large extent like people in your family you know because yeah and I think it's also sometimes hard for other people who may not be like super into the sport of running or whatever it is, BMX or surfing to actually even kind of relate or understand why you would want to do that. Um, yeah. Like for yourself, I guess, you know, coming back to coming back to you now, like having a, a family to be kind of more responsible for, like how is, how has that shifted in terms of, your relationship with running and your relationship with say Max and, and Vanessa and like, how is, how has that dynamic changed if you consider the three pillars and, and your ability to, to have to race and, and all of that? Yeah, I guess I'm trying to be less, less selfish and maybe more like kind of mindful. I, I guess I, I think kind of Max was definitely like, there's definitely, as, as you say, you kind of realize there's more to just kind of running and, and trail running and, having a family is more important and Max doesn't really care if you win a race or come, come stone last. He just wants a good dad, like, and that someone that, that loves him and, and is there for him and can kind of gives him time. And I think that was really cool for me to, to realize. And I almost feel in, in a way it kind of has taken some pressure off, off racing. Maybe at, at times, um, I know when, or kind of Max was born um, in, in 2016 and 20. I had glandular fever when it was a 2015 and 2016 was a bit of a, a comeback, but I, I felt like I was putting a lot of pressure on myself when it came to, to racing. And, and I, I know for me, I've, I've always done the best when I'm just happy and, and having a good time. And kind of when you go into a race, super anxious and nervous, um, that doesn't happen. And I think having, having Max just kind of really kind of ease things off and, and kind of relax me, um, a lot. And, and it was cool to see like, um, so I, I, in, in some ways, maybe kind of having Max maybe detracted from the pure, like kind of maybe I wasn't getting as much sleep. Maybe some of the runs weren't, my training runs weren't as perfect as I would have liked them. But I think I, I made peace with that and I was, I was happy with that and, and kind of just being able to grasp the, the bigger picture and, and just realize that like a race is a race. No one, no one really cares too much. There's going to be another one next year or kind of, a different race next 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 week and kind of people people move on just go out there have a have a good time and, and do the best you, you can do so i think that that really helped me i guess going in, into 2017 and, and being able to like say win western states and states um definitely kind of taking that 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 mindset helped but i guess going back to like family and and, and max and, and vanessa i think also just trying to include them in, in what i do uh, I'm very lucky that Vanessa, as, as you mentioned, she does actually understand what I what I do and and is really supportive and and kind of yeah you know, just kind of gets kind of yeah you know, my my training and 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 what I do. But as I, as I say, I think it is really important to to include them and um, make make them feel feel a part of things. Yeah, and yeah, and you know that's that's so rad that you can you can do that you know you have the opportunity to to include your family in that that part of your life i think it um i think it it's not possible for everyone but to for you to be able to do that it's, it's really nice to hear and maybe it even encourages other people to 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 try and do that you know um which would only be a good thing i think because it would just build the community that that we have in the sport of trail running um, and you know, the more that community um, benefits from being outside and, and just getting more people outside, I think the, the, the better the, the world will be like we kind of touched on before. And um, so like sport in South Africa is a big thing. You know, it's uh, it's massive um, rugby's huge. I know that 
when I came to Cape Town, I was absolutely blown away by the the community and the vibe that surrounds trail running, particularly. Um, it really is just it's rad to to have like I, I kind of feel like being Australian, you, you're almost like cousins of ours in in the competition sense and in the, the ability to get outside and, and enjoy um, nature, you know, on on similar levels and. I guess what I what I want to ask is South Africa's had a pretty full on history with you know it's it's um yeah with its uh, ability to have integration between you know different cultures and and um and I just want to know after growing up in the South Africa you grew up in do you want to see that change or be different to the the South Africa you want say Max to grow up in yeah, I've definitely, as I said, I kind of, I guess, was born in, in the apartheid era and kind of, I think I was about seven or eight, about seven when Nelson Mandela was was released from, from prison and, and that whole change. And yeah, I think it's been a really interesting time to to live in. Um, and it's been yeah, cool to see that the change for, for the good. I think we've still got a lot of, a lot of work to, to do in, in South Africa to kind of, fully see that um the, the change um but yeah I'm, I'm kind of super super positive I, I think we've got a kind of really beautiful country and I think when when we do get get together as 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 a nation um uh, we can do some some really kind of beautiful things and 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 create change I think it's just kind of keeping that that direction I think our, our, our new president is doing a, a great job um unfortunately not to go too much in, in, into politics, so that kind of our last president kind of lost the the way in a no, yeah for for a couple of years, and and um, our, our new president is doing a, a great job, and just even seeing how he's kind of handled this 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 pandemic, um, it's it's been really cool to see, and I guess just kind of people pulling to, together, um, yeah, I guess call call each other the, the rainbow nation. We do have a lot of different cultures and um, a lot of inequalities. Um, but I think, yeah, we're kind of moving in the in in, in the right di- direction. Um, I think it's again, it's just being patient. Probably, well, it's something that won't happen happen over overnight. Um, but yeah, we're kind of yeah, really really proud to to be a part of it. Yeah, I mean, you know, and I guess to keep keeps yeah. Obviously, we don't want to go too much into politics. Let's uh, let's frame it a little bit differently and kind of keep maybe sport as a as a linchpin for it all. And I guess. You know, you guys won the the Rugby World Cup in say two thousand and five or two thousand and seven. Yes. Yeah, and but before that, you won it in nineteen ninety five. Yeah. So you you guys hosted, and that's also when like Nan- Nelson Mandela like how was able to hold up the cup as the president. Yeah. Um, how have you seen? You know, because. You won it in 1995 and from what I've read over history, it kind of was a moment that brought the the whole nation together. And yeah. so can you remember back to that time and what it was like? And, and even if that sense of, um, I guess, community and, and coming together happened again this, this past year that, um, that you guys won the, won the trophy again? Yeah, I kind of when it happened in 90, 1995, I was I was a lot lot younger, but I, I can I can remember it. And yeah, I think just be just I think that was the first time I'd ever seen like everyone from of like from our country like to together, like from kind of really poor previously disadvantaged people to kind of really affluent people. Uh just everyone kind of kind of embracing each other and, and being together. And I think that was like the, the first time that actually kind of sports had actually unified um, our, our, our country. And then obviously in, in 19 or two, 2007, when it happened again, um, kind of everyone rejoicing and kind of everyone celebrating um, together. Um, and then obviously last last year, I think was, was um, Really big for us, just with with Sia uh, lifting the, the the trophy. Our captain um, coming from a kind of really poor background, he actually um, 
kind of started started playing rugby because um, from my understanding kind of he he got a got a meal before rugby practice so he actually only started like playing rugby just basically to to get a meal because some people are like so so poor like their families can't can't afford to to get the meals or literally it's maybe only one meal a day so to see kind of his kind of journey and and just just to actually realize that like we've actually achieved quite a quite a lot um um was pretty like surreal and then really to see kind of the whole of south africa embracing this and and getting behind the the the, the team uh was was like yeah really really cool and and i definitely you can see it really lifts the the, the spirits of of the, the country and then also with that having a new president now I've definitely kind of noticed a, a much um more kind of positive outlook on 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 things um i know obviously our kind of crime rates and stuff like that aren't aren't, aren't great but um i think kind of people are, are seeing past that now they kind of kind of the, the potential and just kind of guys getting things back on on track and as you say i think kind of as nelson mandela said like sport has the the, the power to to change the world it definitely does um even seeing things like comrades or two oceans or even seeing an event on Cape Town like Ultra Trail Cape Town just bringing communities together um and sport maybe unifying people that maybe potentially wouldn't like kind of mingle or, or mix together but but through sport it it does it, it creates that and and definitely kind of the, the rugby world cups have have done that that, that for sure and I would say probably the the 95 world cup and then then last year's world cup Cup winner have probably been the, the two biggest biggest moments in kind of South African uh, kind of sporting um, kind of history at kind of bringing bringing people to, together, or at least in in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, and and to not and to not get too carried away with that side of things, um, it was so interesting. Uh, I first got a real sense of the South African. Um, trail running community actually when i was following a race just via twitter and you were in the race and what started to happen as the race evolved you were moving up spot after spot and they started using like hashtag south africa and there's so many people from south africa started just being like getting on like getting word that ryan was starting to like come up and and win this race and it it really caught my eye i was just so blown away by how much like you being the south african representing just got the whole community like engaged and fired up and i was just like wow it's just it they mean business like they're there to support and it's um i just feel basically like so many other nations can can learn from that example i mean yeah for sure you guys aren't haven't got the most perfect system right now and yeah like without letting history hold you back in any way i think you know you guys really do show a, a whole lot of support um for each other when when the time is is possible to do that i think it's i think it's so rad yeah thanks yeah it's, it's super super cool to see like when when i think when south africans do to come together we kind of really embrace those, those situations and and as, as you said really kind of can be can be really powerful yeah and i think you know this is all like really kind of um it's really great to get you know a perspective from someone who's lived through all those times and i think it's um it's so it's so interesting just you know for me because i i haven't been through a moment like that in history really um but you're also playing your part in that you know you are you work with a number of foundations and you you play your part in using sport as a way to bring people and community together and and almost um maybe give people that are more disadvantaged some hope can you can you like give us some insight into how you play your role in 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 that space Yeah I guess I've I've seen it that like I've like really fortunate that I've that I've come from a privileged background and kind of also through sports and and the people that have kind of believed in in me and and given me the those opportunities I've kind of been yeah you know, been been able to to live my my dreams and and like sport has given me so much um as you mentioned over the past 
13 years has been pretty surreal. So I really feel like strongly about, about giving back and, and trying to make a difference. Um, so I am in, involved with, with a number of, of foundations like the, the Laureus Fund, Foundation. Um, do We've got a, got a dog, T-Dog, which she actually jumped on, on the bed behind me uh, just, just now. So really a big animal lover. So I do stuff with also with the SPCA and, and, and dog. And then also, also, also again, as you say, kind of like using sport to, to, to give back. Also I've done, done a lot of stuff with, with the JAG Foundation and, and the, the Live Foundation. So involved in, in, in quite a few um, different um, foundations. And I think for me, it's just important to, to, to give back. Um, and it's, yeah, it's, it's been, I think some of the work and, and kind of the program visits I've, I've done with the, the Laureus Foundation, it's just been pretty surreal. And I think in, in some ways it's almost like helped me to, to push myself. It's like you go to these, these, these programs and these kids have got like absolutely nothing, but they kind of, they've got such big, big hearts and such like big dreams. And, uh, and they just like, they just don't complain about anything. Um, I remember like doing a couple of JAG trail running camps and literally uh, these kids would like come there with nothing. And as, as a joke, the one day I said, like, we're going to run to the top of that mountain, like pointing up at the top of, or we're in, in Takaya, so like the backside of Tail Mountain, we're going to run to the top. And like not one of the kids complained, they were just like fully amped to, to run up there. And I said, no, no, I'm just, just joking. We're just going to go like a little up. And like for them, like, Kind of they didn't didn't see any any challenges where I know I guess maybe that if those kids had kind of come from a more privileged background they would have kind of said like no ways they want to go and watch TV or, or, or something like that so it's just like seeing what the, those kids like go through um, and kind of their their hardships has, has, has made me realize like flip and don't come don't don't complain because your legs are tired like get get on with it they're bigger the bigger problems in in, in, in the world um, so it's been, been cool to just kind of you know, see and be a part of that and, and, and to be able to, to create a kind of make a, make a difference. And I think it's important, like, as I say, I think living in, in, in South Africa, as you mentioned, there are so many inequalities and there are a lot of kind of bad things happening. But I think it's up to all of us as, as kind of privileged people to try and make a difference. Like it's very easy just to, I guess, kind of, sit on Facebook and you share stuff and you kind of feel like you like environmental warrior or kind of, kind of trying to change the world. But I think it's important to actually get your hands dirty and actually um, go out there and um, yeah, I'll just make a, make a difference. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, as I said, yeah, it's, it's been, it's, it's been like a really cool process. And, and like I said, it's like indirectly, I think I've, I've kind of, got a lot of inspiration and motivation out of it and kind of it's helped me also I guess understand our, our country a lot a lot better yeah like that's I mean you've got it so spot on mate like we can you can click a button and feel like you're changing the world by sharing a, a link to some foundation or whatever but until you until you get in the community and kind of get your hands dirty um yeah until you yeah you really get amongst it and actually put energy into it, then you're only going to get like actual movement and energy out of a situation like that. Yeah. So how does it look for you? Do you, like you, you touched on it before and you said that the advice that Dean gave you before you, you know, went as a, as a full-time kind of professional trail runner and athlete, you know, you've got to be, you can't winning races isn't going to um, be the, the only, the only thing that you can do. So, You've got an exceptional um, team behind you, and and I guess yourself must be exceptionally motivated to to do other things besides just go out and try and get a ready for a race and smash the race. Like your content and the missions that you do, adventures, FKTs, like fastest known times, and the the way you document them and create content around them is is pretty next level. There's not many not many other people that do it as good as you do it. And I don't really mind what marketing managers has to say about that, but you know, like I know it's a, it's like legit and you really, the team that you've got behind you really gets into it. Like you mentioned Dean before and, and he's signed up to a, a number of pretty full on missions, um, particularly the one in the, the Himalayas. So like, 
you know, how, like what motivates you and how do you come up with the, the different ideas to, to be a different athlete compared to all the other athletes? Yeah, I guess like, as, as I touched on initially, I, th- I think for me, it was never like kind of competing that kind of attracted me to the sport. I definitely do. Like if I said that I, I wasn't competitive, I'd be lying. Like there is, like I've definitely got a, a big competitive drive, but I, I think kind of for me, what really attracts me to the, the sport is like adventure and just, I guess through adventure also being able to push myself. So I guess it's maybe that competitiveness with my, myself, not necessarily trying to kind of beat so-and-so at a, at a race. But uh, yeah, I guess is that, that like, so for me, it's always been trying to find that, that balance between kind of doing these epic adventures, but also doing, doing racing and also trying to like merge them, them to um, a, a degree. And, and then I guess also, as, as you mentioned, I think I've, I've been lucky to have an amazing support team around me. And, and I think also like for me, what's always been most important is just that like everyone is, is as passionate as, as what I am um, about something. So yeah, I've been cool to, like do a lot of like epic missions with with Dean Dean Leslie and and he's documented a lot of stuff and he's like extremely talented and we're always chatting, bouncing ideas ideas um, the whole time um, like constantly sending each other each other voice notes about um, ideas and kind of projects and I, th- I think for me I've always been like quite a like a bit of a, a dreamer if that makes sense like I'm always kind of dreaming up ideas um, and then I guess being, being lucky to, to be involved with with guys like, like Red Bull that love it when you give them those those crazy ideas and, and see how it's possible to, to make them happen. But I also guess in, in a nutshell for me, just kind of, kind of running, eating and sleeping, I think I would get bored of it after a year. I like to kind of mix things up and as, as I say, I, I love being out there and running and also sometimes love doing those sessions and, and getting in a solid, consistent block of training coming up to like a focus race. But then I also really enjoy kind of planning for some projects or just dreaming up stuff or even stuff like, I guess, like 13 Peaks, just being being able to kind of potentially give back a bit to my local community and just create something cool. I, I think that that's always like also kind of, kind of in, inspired me and, and it keeps me, me, me stoked. I always say I want to be that, that that old belly uh, that that or kind of for non South Africans that that old dude dude that's still like sixty or seventy years old still kind of running in, in the mountains or maybe kind of hiking uh, but just kind of being out there and, and still um, enjoying myself. Yeah, it's rad that you you do um, come up with concepts that aren't just personally going to benefit you. I mean, you've you've come up with like Red Bull Lionheart like you mentioned before the 13 peaks challenge um i think you were you were also doing like fkts uh yeah. table mountain as well um all you know in an effort to to not just like put your name up in lights but really to to just get people out there and have setting their own challenge about it like what is what's the kind of like the feedback you've got from doing that i mean you've, you've put yourself out there. You've put a lot of time, effort, you've got, you know, like to get your sponsors involved and convince them to back your projects is, is putting yourself out there. It's a big thing. Like, have you like, yeah, what, what, what have you seen and what are the, what are the benefits of doing that? And like, do you recommend it to other athletes? I suppose. Yeah, I, I definitely like for, for me, as I said, I've always been like a bit of a dreamer and love kind of dreaming up concepts. And then, as I say, being lucky to have guys like like Red Bull that have, have supported most of the, the bigger projects I've done, whether it's kind of a personal project like running the Greater Malaya Trail with with Reno or a, a Lionheart, which is a Red Bull Lionheart, which is one of the first kind of community or was an, an event or a race, but one of the first kind of community events I, I did um, or kind of hosted with them um and and the feedback from that is is being yeah you know, it's been amazing like you touched on um i think in in cape town and south africa we've got a great a great trail running community so it's, it's been cool to to see that that feedback and also just see guys um that kind of will do like red bull line hot which is really short or maybe do do a table mountain fkt like i had a vertical k was one of them go and do the vertical k and then like 
two months later, you see kind of that they've kind of headed out kind of into the Cedarburg, which is like a wilderness area to to do like a, a rad little micro adventure on, on, on their own. So just kind of, I guess, giving them those like stepping stones to kind of grow them, them, themselves. Um, and even now with, with 13 Peaks, for me, the most powerful stories have, have been the guys that have actually hiked it over multi days, and just to see like people that actually the one one story, the one one person just literally kind of did the first part with a friend, just to kind of she'd never been up on Table Mountain. I thought it'd be cool to to summit Lion's Head and actually enjoyed it so much. He just kept going and actually completed the the full thirteen peaks. So just I guess yeah, just to see those stories and and realize there's kind of I guess there's more, there's more to life than just kind of racing um i think it's like kind of just getting out and and kind of setting those as personal challenges and kind of pushing your, your boundaries and, and your limits a little bit is, is far more, more powerful yeah man to um to hear your take on that is uh yeah i've got a huge amount of respect for for the way you view that and the way you put your time into that because like you said you could you could easily just sleep and train three times a day and, and stay in your stay in your your own little world and not really uh not really give a flip about anyone else but um yeah again it, it goes back to that that has probably gone a long way to creating the community that you have over there which is which is very welcoming and, it, and it's very rad like and um so I want to get into a little bit of detail about the the great Himalayan trail I know it's something that you've probably spoken about numerous times on on a number of different interviews um but you know you yourself you went out there it was a it was a huge mission i am lucky enough to have spoken to you outside of this conversation about it i've spoken to um everyone else that was involved like particularly dean um jared as well jared deserves a shout out for, for being out there and um and rainer as well it just you know, can you just recount the distance, the days, and just a little bit about you know the, the things that stick out for you about that that mission? Yeah, so she so it was twenty. Well, it took us about twenty four days, but obviously we're there for a lot longer. I think hiking into the start was about seven days, which Dean and and Jared joined us for, which was that that was pretty crazy. I think you could make a a docky just on 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 the hike in. Um, yeah, so it was it was like took us twenty four days. It was about a thousand six hundred kilometers with about seventy thousand meters of of elevation gain. Um, yeah, I guess the kind of challenges that stick to mind was uh, Nepal had quite a late winter, so some of the 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 early passes, the the higher sections, actually we were like the first guys to go over them that that um, summer or kind of um, going into in, in, into the summer so that was pretty um, you know for me kind of growing up in, in, in Cape Town kind of not having a lot of experience with snow and ice that really pushed me out of my, my comfort zone um, jumping ar around a bit but I, I just I remember kind of I don't know like always it was always something I wanted to do for me I thought this like the Great Himalaya Trail would be like the ultimate adventure, like the pinnacle of, of, of adventure. And then I guess after Western States in 2017, I was like, well, I'm not getting any younger. Like can't keep talking about it. Let, let's do it. And I spoke to Reno and, and we made it, made it happen. But I, you kind of get these romantic ideas of these kind of white snow capped mountains. And it looks pretty epic in, in videos and, and, and photos. But I think when you actually fly in there and you fly in like this little plane between the, the mountains and you're just getting dwarfed by, by these massive mountains, you just realize the scale and enormity of them. And then, yeah, you know, I guess going into, into those kind of conditions, Reno got, got frostbite or sort of kind of had, had some injuries along, along the way, trying to navigate when kind of there were no, no trails and, as I guess it's not like you kind of you can't just make a like one navigation error and, and if we'd got into the wrong valley that would have like led to us getting properly lost and and to kind of starving or, or freezing to to death um, and I think what kind of springs to mind was just how kind of welcoming the local people were there um, like we we had a plan in place and we kind of knew where we kind of rough distances we wanted to cover. And where we kind of where we could sleep and not, but yeah, you know, things change along the way. And and 
like one time we would kind of rock up at three o'clock in the morning in this little village and like knock on a door and, and kind of this family would open their, their house up, make us a meal, kind of let us sleep in their, their beds and, and there'd never be any expectations and kind of, um, yeah, they were just so cool about it. And, and this happened on a number of occasions, even in, in the Dolpha region where it was super remote, um, there was actually just nothing nothing there and a lot of, a lot of the people actually they kind of move around they're a little bit like nomadic so where we thought the villages there was actually nothing and we actually stumbled upon this monastery and we were actually in, in serious trouble like i think if, if we if we didn't sleep there the night and we kept going I, I think we would have literally like frozen to to death and just yeah i guess kind of just yeah being being welcomed into to this monastery when like they didn't know like who the hell we were but they just uh, let us let, uh, like kind of open their their doors to us was was pretty cool but yeah and in, in a nutshell definitely the wildest adventure I've, I've done probably i wouldn't go rush back and, and do it again but i'm definitely pretty pretty glad I've, I've done it and just yeah some i guess some crazy experiences along the along the way i think like jesus has taken me a good like two two plus years to actually kind of unpackage a whole a whole lot lot of that um and as, as you mentioned kind of someone like like dean and jared i think literally they could have made a behind the scenes docky on, on what they experienced and then even i guess dean having to spend about six months editing the the film and just having to like revisit all that footage the whole time it's just like yeah just pretty pretty surreal yeah it's um yeah geez i you know, from what I've seen, because you've got you've got the film out there now. It's um, yeah. I think I don't know um, if it is still available on Red Bull TV or yeah, it's on, on your yeah, Red Bull TV's lessons from the edge. I think it's also on, on YouTube as well. So mm -hmm. is it's still out there. Yeah, and you know, like it's hard to it's hard to capture everything that that went down in that trip. But um, but I think yeah, you guys were able to to do a wicked job of of showing. A good bit of that um like how did that change you as a as a person yeah as you said like the you know, the film i think like it like i guess kind of captures like just a, a snap a snapshot of, of what happened i think there was like so much that actually went on there and yeah you know, it's definitely yeah you know, changes you you as 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 a person in a in a big way um like as I said, being a being a young father going in, in into the project, I think that was like mentally really tough for me because I guess doing a project like that, it's just purely for personal gain and um, like wanting to do something cool, um, and almost feel like you kind of there were a number of times when our lives were at at risk and like things could have snowballed out of control really really quickly and just like being a a young father and just that that kind of there were a lot of times I'd, I'd like thought to myself like you're being stupid like kind of why are you like you're risking kind of max growing up with without out a father or even kind of as the, the project prolonged you're kind of out there for kind of we're out there doing the project for for 24 days but we're out there for a lot longer hiking in and, and getting back out again and then you kind of get some whatsapp clips when like my wife Vanessa sent me ones and like Max had started talking a little bit and you like you start missing those those key experiences and, and I guess you you start to realize like kind of like why am I, I, I doing this um so I guess yeah I, I suppose like a bit all over the place here but but the project definitely was a I guess a bit of a selfish quest um but something like I'm glad I've, I've done I definitely think as, as a person I've, I've kind of grown a lot a lot out of it um and just yeah, I guess in, 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 in some ways, I suppose I've said this a lot, but just the, the, the people, just realizing the Himalayan people, just how welcoming they they were. And just like, they like kind of, um, yeah, I guess like a, a really small or like a big gesture from from their thing, but maybe from, from their side, maybe it's like like a small thing, but it made such a big difference to, to Raina and I, and it just makes you, you, you kind of realize that just kind of, we got to be less less selfish as 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 humans and just kind of try and make time for for everyone and not necessarily kind of judge people like by their past or, or where they've 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 come from. But yeah, I guess not not getting getting too deep there. Um, yeah, I, th I think the 
the project definitely kind of yeah, mentally and, and physically definitely shaped shaped me, I think in 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 more of a positive way. But there I guess obviously are the the negatives um from it. And as I said, I don't I don't think I'll be rushing off and doing anything that that risky again. Um obviously you'll know I did did go off and do a project in, in Namibia along the skeleton coast, which kind of also seemed to snowball a little bit out of out of control. I didn't didn't expect it to to do um that but yeah just just in general i think trying to be a little bit maybe more more cautious um just obviously being a a young dad now but also that at the same time having said said all that like i think it's important to to live life but just also know where your limits are and i think that's like looking i really look up to someone like like killian Jornet, who I think is yeah kind of superhuman in, in in the mountains, but he really he knows his his own limits. He knows when to to turn back, and and I think that 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 that's really important. Um, yeah, just just to kind of not take things for 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 advantage, and if you're not not feeling it, like go with your your gut and and, and turn back. Kind of you can always give it a go in, another time. Um, don't yeah don't don't take stupid stupid chances. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you've you've got a lot of those. I guess you've got a lot of experience to call upon now after after so many years um, being being in the sport and being a, a professional trail runner. Is there anything you you would say to the the young Ryan back in the day that you know any advice that if you could go back and give it to him, you you would uh, you'd serve it to him? Um. Yeah, I think I've been lucky, as I say, like definitely made some mistakes along the way, but I don't think I, I like regret any of of those m- mistakes. I think maybe I'd probably say just kind of like cherish the. I wouldn't. I don't like to say like victories, but maybe milestones al- along the way. I think the times when like things are going well and you just like cool, tick that box, podium in that race, like move on to the next thing, and not actually just enjoy yourself and enjoy the process. It's just like you feel this pressure that you kind of keep going, keep, you keep needing to like kind of jump onto the next thing and kind of tick that box. Where I think just to maybe at times I could have slowed things down and just like enjoyed things, um, a little bit more and just kind of soaked it up. Um, yeah, so I I guess maybe that, that would have been one thing, but I definitely, and maybe at times looking back, I could have said like, I think I'd always been quite calculated with like races and, and events and not overdoing things. There definitely periods and times when I had done that, and maybe it was because I felt the pressure I needed to to do more. Um, but realistically, I think we all got to learn a lot along the way, and you, you need to make those mistakes. And, and for me, it's kind of obviously that the success, like kind of the achievements, have, have like been amazing. But I think it's when things aren't going well is when you kind of learn the mo- most about um, yourself. And I guess people say that, and it is is kind of sucky when you're in a really bad patch and you've got to dig yourself out of it but if, but if you don't dig yourself out of it I guess you don't you don't learn about your about yourself yeah I, I have to agree man definitely um yeah those tough moments uh the ones that you the ones that really stick in your mind sometimes actually hey more than anything yeah exactly I'd say like if if I remember when I was I was writing my my book or just having to um kind of kind of run through everything and it's weird you'd think like could it be like big achievements that would come to mind and actually it, it wasn't as you said it was some of those those lower moments or like a kind of for me one of the like most significant like racing events came to mind was kind of um winning a, a k4 uh what's or K, k9 um dog uh, rescue race with, with my dog t-dog just like kind of um it's like a 4k race but just kind of being on on the like little like drum podium with it. it was just like yeah pretty pretty surreal and that's definitely like something for me that like stick out to my mind probably more so than a than a western than a western states or like a lead, lead ball win or something like kind of something like that yeah i mean two of the biggest races in in north america or the ultra running world and yeah i mean t-dog's famous man like if winning a race with t-dog is a big deal in anyone's book um so just a couple more things, man, before we, um, before we wrap it up, I think there's, there's achievements and they're tangible and they can be calculated and they can be in the form of, yeah, a, a win at the, at 
Western States endurance run. And then there's success. And I think success is something that is very personal and it's hard to really quantify sometimes. You've got achievements. You've got a list of them and you've got, and that list runs on your, from your hand all the way up to your arm. And that's, that's set, you know, that's, that's in history now. But do you feel like you as a person, can you look in the mirror and say, you know what, Ryan, like pat yourself on the back because you've, you've been successful in this endeavor. Yeah. Like I, I agree with you, like in terms of like, kind of, as you say, like achievements are, are quite, quite personal. Uh, but uh, so putting putting me on on on, on the spot no like <laughs> no it's like success um is definitely like like for me like i view success i guess is like kind of peace of mind and, and being happy with yourself and maybe at times like maybe early on in my career like you kind of achieving um your goals and and, and achievements but maybe like you're still trying to like kind of figure out your, yourself in, internally and and kind of actually like you may be unhappy and if you look at I guess a lot of professional sportsmen and a lot of like kind of reading and, and stuff I've done, it's like guys are winning kind of world cups or kind of world championships. And they're actually really, really kind of unhappy. And, and, and I think for me, then that, that shows that kind of not being successful. Like I think the greatest success we can have is, is being kind of happy with ourselves. And as you say, being able to look at, look at yourself in, in, in the mirror and saying, cool, like I'm actually happy with that with that guy um which i i am i think there are like a lot like more things i'd like to achieve or kind of improvements i, I could kind of make but i think I, on, a, on on a whole like i'm pretty happy at, at at the moment now when when i kind of look at the at, at, at the mirror and like yeah i guess got a got a couple of extra gray hairs um but a bit apart apart from that uh yeah pretty kind of i guess as 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 i mentioned just kind of like pretty at, at peace and, and chill at, at, at the moment with kind of how things are going. Yeah. And, you know, don't get me wrong. I don't, I don't bring up that, um, you know, you're very far from the end of your ability to have impact and be successful and have more achievements. Like the career of Ryan Sands is, has been say like 13 years now, but it's, it's got a long way to go still, which is, well, you know, and, and I'm so stoked to be able to to know you on a personal level and be able to like watch what you do going forward because, you know, you're you're um, like I said, like the environment that you've got surrounding you to to help you do those things is is rad and it allows you to do it. And I see that the the kickback to the community and to people that you you know that you may not know personally or may not be in contact with is like, but that there is an impact there and it's huge. And I think. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's so good to have, um, to have a person like you in this sport, really, like you're, you're like a lot of other dudes that are, that are in this sport in for the right reasons and, and in a really good way. So yeah, man, thanks. Thanks a lot for, yeah, just thanks for doing what you do really. Well, thank you. Um, so just to round it out though, like every, I, you know, I've listened to a lot of interviews with you and I've, I've been a part of a lot of conversations with you and things like that, but I, I really don't feel like anyone actually asks you about your book and, and how that process was like, are you, you know, like it, for many, the, putting out a book isn't a very common thing for a lot of people in, in this sport, you know, like some people have done it for sure, but you know, how, how did you get much feedback from that? Because a lot of people must have been, able to read that book and get some serious inspiration from doing it yeah the, the feedback from from the book was was really really cool and yeah i think the process like it was yo know, it was like a long process i think um luckily I, I teamed up with with steve steve smith um who actually he was the, the editor at, at red bulletin when when i first uh when i first signed with with red bull and, and we always just seemed to click really well like he just kind of used to used to get what i used to say he could kind of write it in, in in my tone and just like it felt really natural and um yeah i guess we kind of hadn't really seen each other for a year or two and he actually accidentally bashed into my car and then um like we actually got got chatting and i was like Flip, like we spoke like years before about doing a book one day and then we got chatting i was like Flip, 
let's let's do this. Um, I think it was around about the time when I had the glandular fever, so I was taking it a bit a bit more easy. And um, yeah, so what happened? Like basically sat down and did loads and loads of, of interviews with me. Um, but I think like the important thing about a book for me was really not just to like be like a really long interview or kind of, it was really important to like go like a few levels down from what kind of anyone had heard from me before. So it was quite like mentally, it was quite draining. Like God, Steve was like quite to the point with, with, with me and like really wanted to kind of, get as much out of me as, as, as possible, which I think kind of he did an amazing job at, at, at doing. But so it was a good like six months of, of interviews and then transcribe the in- interviews and then kind of he would write chapter by chapter and then I'd read through them. And then like first, like it was good. It was quite hard to, to read some of those chapters initially. And then it's like, no, he was changing this and that. You got to downplay that. And then um, he was like, just like read it a few more times. Like he kind of, need to keep certain things in and um so yeah i think it ended up being like that was about six months and then kind of putting it together was was another six months so it was a lot it was a lot more work than than what i what i initially thought um but it was really cool and, and rewarding and it was quite a good like mental process for me just to kind of really like run through my career and, and as i say like i think i learned a lot from it just realizing as you say like when you think about like big achievements and suddenly you realize like something that really stands out the main thing was like winning a race with with T Dog and then like going through through other things. It was it was cool. I think it like helped me almost like kind of just in my mind like be able to like file a lot of things and kind of what was important and and, and not. So I think it was was cool and um, you know potentially may look at doing a, another one at at some stage with with Steve. Obviously after the Himalayas and Skeleton Coast and 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 a couple of other events. But yeah, it was. It was yeah, it was was cool. Like um, yeah, pretty pretty taxing, um, but yeah, kind of like awesome to actually kind of see where it started and then to actually hold a, a finished like kind of book in your in in your hand. Yeah, and you know, it's a that's again that's a huge achievement. But it sounds like you feel like it's um yeah, it was quite successful. He um, I assume you probably had to be pretty vulnerable in that situation. Yeah, like as, as I said, I think Steve's first thing was was to me as like I'm not like I'm not I'm not not writing a book if you're gonna bullshit me. Like I want the like the proper stuff. And Steve's a really good good journalist, and as I said, I feel really comfortable with him. So I really did did open up. Um, did a lot of interviews at at my house, and I think Vanessa listened in on one or two interviews, and she was like, "Geez, like you haven't even shared half of that that stuff with 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 me." Like she, I think, kind of learns a lot about me by just kind of keeping one one ear open in 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 the kitchen when I was talking and or kind of doing the, the interviews. Um so yeah it's it, you know as, as I say you, you've got to be really like vulnerable but it's it yeah it's it kind of it's quite draining like we'd do like an hour and a half in, interview and Steve would leave and I'd be literally like kind of just feel absolutely like shattered like I just ran a 50 miler or something like like that. And it was just purely because I think you kind of going through so many emotions and just trying to be as open and honest as, as possible. But um, yeah, I definitely think it was a, was a really cool process. Yeah. Right on, man. Like I think it, that whole ability to be vulnerable and open up um, probably prevents and scares away a lot of people from doing a book, you know? So good on you for, yeah, being being able to to go through that process and and step up to it that's that's cool. I um I hope uh, I hope that encourages a few more people to to check it out. Is it uh, what's it called? Uh, tra- Trailblazer. Yeah. Trailblazer. I do re- I do remember actually reading small segments of it when you were out here okay. in Australia. Um, okay. And um, I remember sitting in the car with you and uh, we were up in the blue mountains at ultra trail Australia. And I was just kind of flicking back and forth. And I, and I got to the point where it was like, I read a small section that said, you know, coming second in a race or coming fourth in the race are definitely the worst positions to come. And, and you'd just come fourth in ultra trail Australia. And I was just like, Oh, this is awkward. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think, I think fourth is, fourth is worse than, than second. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. Yeah, there's there's no doubt. Um, dude, thanks so much for your time. Thanks for being up oh. for the convo. Um, 
it's great to touch base with you again. I hope you, uh, I hope, you know, one thing I really, really hope comes to fruition in, at, in this year is I hope all of this safely passes and we can all gather again at, at UTCT at the end of the year and just kind of celebrate getting out there again. Yeah, exactly. No, I feel super, super amped. I'm sure, I'm sure it will do. And yeah, thanks so much for for having me on the on, on the show. It's been freaking super cool. Yeah, I hope we didn't go too deep, mate, and, and you don't feel too shattered. But um, you know, one day I'll get there. <laughs> nice. Now I gotta go go jump with Max on the trampoline now. Rad man, say hi to T Dog and the, the rest of the family, Vanessa, Max and yeah, you guys keep well in the lockdown and yeah, like I said, I hope it all blows over soon and yeah, all of all will uh, be back to normal but with a positive twist in the way we're we're living in the world, like you say. hundred percent dude. Thanks again for listening to another episode of Stokely. I really hope you got something out of that and I hope you were able to get to know Ryan Sands a little bit more. He's a pretty incredible athlete. There's no denying that. And he's definitely someone who has mastered the art of giving back to his community as well, which I think is super inspiring and really important. So I hope you either get some inspiration to have a conversation of your own through this podcast or just get inspired to give a little back within the community that you exist. And that's a huge win. So Thanks a lot again for taking the time to sit down and have a listen. And if you do feel like sharing the conversation with someone else, you know, there is nothing wrong with that. We would really appreciate it. And if you can't really do that right now, then we would really appreciate you just letting us know what you think. Maybe dropping us a comment or sending us a message because it's always pretty nice to wake up in the morning to a, a nice message about how somebody got something out of Stokely. So yeah, really appreciate that. Thanks a lot for your time and we hope to be putting out another conversation on Stokely pretty soon. So until then, be well, take care and have a great day, evening, morning. Take it easy.